Well, good morning. Wednesday, February the 15th. February the 15th. I hope you all had a great day yesterday. And uh, Valentine's Day. A day of love. Every day is a day of love, though, isn't it? I'd like you all... Um, there's many prayers going out, prayer requests for people. And our hearts go out to everyone who's asking for prayers. Uh, Doris, you posted about Janice and Walt, who are both in separate hospitals, and their family are split between the two, and they're in serious condition. Our heart goes out to you. Our heart goes out to that family. May the joy of the Holy Spirit be upon him. May the peace of the Holy Spirit be upon him. When I say joy, I mean there's a contentment in your heart knowing that God is in charge of a situation. That's the joy of God, the joy of Jesus. We need that in us. We need that in us so that we can face life and face all the trials and tribulations and sicknesses and deaths and tragedies that are thrown at us, knowing that God is in charge. God is in charge. So I have a little prayer request, and it's, it's for a little guy. It's just a little six-month-old kitten. He seems to have had a upper respiratory infection, and it's left him with a slight neurological problem. He can't stand on his front legs. And uh, I think our hearts need to be open to even the least in this world which is what Jesus commanded us. What you do for the least, you do for me. And how much a little six-month-old kitten. I tell you, God is at work. He brought Tiny back to us. Trish wanted to call him Miracle or Lazarus so you can imagine what happened. But we carried on calling him Tiny. And God brought him back to us. God will do these things. Because when God does something, he wants us to sit up and take notice. That's the whole point of this. I and mean, when we have a life on this earth that, you know, when it's ended, we're going to go to be with him, absent from the bodies, present with the Lord. Which is a good thing, right? But what happens in between, there's a reason and it's to help bring others to the Lord, or to strengthen us, or to show us that God is working in our lives. So all of these things, no matter how big, no matter how small, and I mean no matter how small, I reiterate, Charlotte said that the other day, no matter how big or how small, and that's true. Don't think that your problems are too big or that the issues are too small. God is a living God and he's with us. He's inside of us. He's with us all the time. You can talk to him. Prayer is just talking to God. You know, he used to walk with Adam and talk with him. He had a friend and he lost his friend and he misses him and he wants us to be his friends. Moses was a friend of God's. We need to be a friend of God's. We need to be a friend of Jesus Christ. We need to talk to him. Don't go into some great big lengthy spiel and, and you know, I mean, if your kid came up to you and talked to you like that, you'd go, what is wrong with you? You know? He suddenly pulls out a list from the back of his pocket. I want this and I want that and I need that and please do this and, and fix that and do that. And, uh, and oh, you've got, you're, Dad, you are great. You are fantastic, Dad. I love you, Dad. You are so great, Dad. He said, what is wrong with you? Why don't you just talk to me like a normal person? You know, maybe we should take that attitude a little bit more often and talk to God. He's right there inside of you. If you've got the Holy Spirit in you, Jesus Christ is with you. God is there. The Holy Trion is there. Okay. I talk a lot, don't I? 
Let's get into the Word. Into the Word. King James Bible, chapter 27. It's a big chapter. We're reading verses 27 to 50, the middle section of the chapter. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered him unto him the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit upon him, and they took the reed and smote him on the head. And after they had mocked him, they took the robe off from him and put his own raiment on him. And they led him away to crucify him. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. Him they compelled to bear his cross. And when they were come unto a place called Golgotha, that is to say, a place of the skull, they gave him vinegar to drink mingled with gall. And when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. And sitting down, they watched him there, and set up over his head the accusation written, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then there were two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and another on the left. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads, and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priests mocking him, with the scribes and elders said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the son of God. The thieves also, which were crucified with him, cast the same in his teeth. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lamach sabatini. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them that stood there when they heard that said, This man called for Elias. And straight away one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put on a reed and gave it to him to drink. And the rest said, Let be, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. I don't need to say anything about that, do I? Thank you for listening. Please take your Bible. Go back and read it yourselves. Let it sink in. God is speaking to us. He gave us his only begotten son so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Remember, he loves us. He loves us dearly. And I love you too. Have a great day. Bye for now.